Good morning. I'm Tony Torrance here at the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. We're going to tie ourselves a little summer double hackle. This fly is uh, based on Deck Hogan's garden hackle fly. A um, little variant. So let's uh, give her a shot. We're going to start out with uh, some silver mylar. You always tie the gold side out first. Tie it in, wrap it back down the bend. I'm going to take this a little further than you normally would because I want a pretty prominent tag on this of pink overwrap of floss and the silver just really makes it pop underneath it. Take my floss and I usually hold it up and double it. So I've got it in the center here, tied in, pull back. And I'll just take this, wrap it back. and then come back forward. Try to keep it as smooth as you can. And there's a classic example of what not to do. Okay, got that trimmed up. Um, back hackle is um, Pink Guinea. The hackle's all prepped. Going to cut the tip off here, tie that in. Again, we're going to do this collar style sparsely. You do not want a real ha heavy hackle in the back because you want to be able to see that tag, the fish to see the tag anyway. So one, you know, and a half wraps, two wraps at the most. Again, that's pulled back in a collar style. There we go with that. Next is a mylar rib. I'm going to use uh, Marcos's hairline wishbone whirler. It's a brass whirler. It weighs quite a bit so you can spin your dubbing really nicely. I'm going to take and make a loop. Bring my thread forward. Coat this with a little bit of wax. Put your whirler on there. Take your dubbing. Now this is a purple STS. It's got little flecks of red or pink in it. I can't really tell. My eyesight's not as good as it used to be. But it's got some highlights in it so it looks real nice in the water. And I'm just spreading this out between those thread fibers. Got that there. Spin my whirler. See how nice that works? One spin, I'm good. Run my fingers up and down to get excess material off. Then just grab your thread and bring it forward. You'll notice that I'm kind of stroking the material back a little bit as I bring it around. This stuff is about as close to seal as you're going to get. And those of you who have tied with seal know how nice it looks on a fly, how translucent it is. I've all but quit tying with seal for multiple reasons, but this stuff is really, really nice. So now I'm going to stand these fibers up. Anything that's too long, I'm just going to bring the scissors along catch it, bring my rib around, three wraps, that's all you need in a steelhead fly, okay, that's in there, now I'll take a, a little brush and just kind of pull those fibers out, there's a lot of different tools out there, you choose whatever suits your fancy. As this thing gets fished, it's going to get torn up even more, which is not a bad thing. It just looks buggier. Next, I've got a pheasant rump feather, black. I've already prepped this. Everything's standing out. Next, I'm just going to trim back the tip for my tying of it in, for tying it in. Excuse me. Again, this will be collar style. This is you know a little spay looking bug on the front end. 
Again, don't get too crazy with your hackle. Um, it's pretty easy to do. I usually do it myself a little more than I like to. Okay. That I don't. You want to kind of push that back a little bit. See how it lays down nice. Next, we got a pair of purple grizzly hackle tips for the wing. I usually pair them up like this and then lay them on top of the fly to get the length of the wing I want. I usually want the tips to line up with that bend of the hook. You can tie them a little longer. You know, you want them to waggle in the water. The hackle tips, when they get wet, they, they really move. And uh, attract those fish. Lay that on top. I'm going to grab these stems and pull that in there. And hopefully these are setting just about right. And they are. Bring them forward just a little bit more. And I'm going to splay them. Now what I mean by splaying, when you've got your wings, see how they're laying out? They cup away from one another. Use a cautery tool here just to cut these. Just makes it a little cleaner. Clean up a little bit of thread and stuff. Gives you a little smaller head when you're done. If you haven't tried a cautery tool, you should take a look at them. They're um, worth messing with. Next, we're going to put a finishing hackle in front of that, which is guinea, and this is prepped. Purple guinea. Again, this is collar style as well. Just adds just, you know, a little more depth, a little transition of color. And here's the other thing. Cleans up your head a little bit. My whip finish tool here.